we are using a five by seven wood gallery blank. The amazing new Verde mold with all that gorgeous detail. And I'm using this rice paper that I think is gonna coordinate really well with that. So I'm gonna start by doing what I always do to my memory tile. And I use a texture medium and I coat the board with a layer of texture. And I already have in mind that I want this to swoop from the um, upper left. So I'm just gonna use this section right here. I'll use cornstarch in my molds. It just makes it really easy for them to release. Now that it's dry, I'm going to add my rice paper. This particular rice paper is called City Background by Dick Page Queen. And um, I'm really drawn to the blue section of this paper. So because in my master plan, I'm thinking that I want to do the um, leaves and the vines in silver, I think it'll pop really nicely against this color but I'm using clear liquid patina. And then I will go ahead and I will dry this. I ended up using this section right here, along with this single leaf and this single leaf right here. Maybe bring that one in there and this longer one. I think I'm gonna do that. I like that better. So I'm going. While I'm waiting for the clay to set up, I'm gonna go in with some big top sealer and seal the paper. I painted all of the mold pieces using DIY paint in Little Black Dress. I painted the sides of the wood gallery blank and brought some of that black paint around the edge on the top of the tile. And now I'll dry it. I'm gonna take a baby wipe and just blend in the paint that I put along the edge. And now I'm going to add some silver paint. It is called Dazzling Aluminum and it is by Paint Couture. What I'm using now is black chiffon glaze. It is also a paint couture product. The black chiffon glaze really makes the molds in this piece pop. I also used the glaze around the edges of my wood gallery blank. And then I used a dry brush and glazed 
parts of the tile where I felt that there should be more shadowing, especially around those mold pieces. I love this. I'm loving the new Lover of Flowers transfer. It is eight, eight by 12 pages, just filled with the most beautiful greeting card sayings and gorgeous flowers. So I am super excited to be using this on my next project. And when I have my eight by eight wood gallery blank, and I am going to actually do more of a stain on that and then I'm going to take my transfer I decided on the tea bros and I'm going to use just normal everyday spun bond it's like an interfacing well wow. and we're going to start with DIY dark and decrepit I wanted my transfer to pop off the interfacing, so I put on a rather heavy coat of DIY paint in White Swan. I kept layering it, concentrating on getting it heavier, more in the center where I know that the transfer would lie. And then I wanted the edges to be irregular, so I took my X-Acto knife and I just kind of cut an irregular edge along all four sides. After I dried that, I applied a layer of DIY Big Top Sealer so that my transfer would stick really well to the interfacing. Okay, I like that. Now I'm going to take some Distress Ink. This is Vintage Photo. Up in there. Maybe I'll take and bend part of this right there. Like that. Bend part of it right up in there. I love that. I am going to go and grab some walnut stain, which is deeper to go around the very edge. Now I need that ink to set a little so that I can seal it because it will smear. So you need to make sure that it is dry. Everything's dry. And when I do a piece like this, I don't adhere it to my board. I use these upholstery nails. Now, these are larger ones that I actually got at a big box craft store. And they are six tenths of an inch. And they have. And just like that. It is finished.
I think what I was most excited about in this release was this gorgeous paint inlay called Lattice Rose. It reminds me of wallpaper that was in my grandmother's house. And it just brings back all of those good feels that you get from um, that point in time. There are four different designs and we're gonna use three of the four in this project. So I have this wood that was from um, an old school house in a um, small little country town by my house. And I love this wood, it's tongue and groove, and it is um, very time worn. So you can see the chippiness of it. Now the nice thing about this is even though they're tongue and groove, I can rearrange the order. So I'm gonna set two of the boards aside and I'm gonna do just one at a time. I'm gonna start with this board this pattern. Originally, I wanted to use clear liquid patina with this paint inlay that really would allow the character of that old school house wood to come through. But after I got the first piece done, I didn't quite get the contrast that I wanted. So I decided to do all of the paint inlays with DIY white swan paint. And I'm gonna paint it with the white swan. Again, you just want to make sure you have a wet coat of paint. I'm still gonna get the texture from the layers of paint underneath. Smooth it out. If you really want to make sure that there aren't a lot of wrinkles, as you're laying it down, you would attach this part and you can pull the other end and smooth it out as you, as you go along. I personally like the wrinkles. So I'm going to use my brayer. Now I'm going to spritz it. So I wanna make sure I get the water there, just kinda coax in that paint off the back of the sheet. And then just like I did with the clear liquid patina, I just wipe up the excess water just makes it dry more quickly. And we're going to dry it. So I do let that cool off a little. I don't think you have to. Now you wanna get this wet because if you start peeling back, much like tape, it would pull off your paint that you started with. What you wanna do is you wanna moisten it so that you're separating the carrier sheet from the paint that's on the inlay. When I start pulling back, if I'm feeling tension, I'll get it more wet. That's just gorgeous. And we're getting some of that natural wood peeking through in some spots. So I'm gonna dry this and then I spray all my paint inlays with Rust-Oleum Matte Sealer. You don't want to brush on sealer because you'll smear the paint. 
after you seal it with a spray sealer, then you can go in with any water-based products. So I'm going to put the first one that we did next to this and see how I feel about the two together. Or if I want to paint over the other one. So let's see here. And I think I'm going to want to. I think I'm going to want to go ahead and do this one white. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to let that board finish drying. So. Spritz it. Something else I want to mention is when you cut an edge close like this, water can seep underneath and you might get some smearing. So it, it's usually a better idea not quite cut it quite so close like I did. Start pulling it up. And it's, it's kind of cool. It's pulling up and some of that previous inlay is coming through. That looks absolutely amazing. That is so cool. So I've got a little bit there a little bit there. Some of the natural wood, we're getting the striations of that. That's gorgeous. So these are the two that we have done right now, and I'm not sure the order that I'm gonna put them in. So I've been playing with the layout, and I think I like this one, if I can lighten this board up enough. These have been sprayed. I have typed up my saying, which is by Maya Angelo. And I use a font that I download from defont.com and it's called um, Scriptina Pro is what it's called. I lost my mind for a second. So a bird does not sing because it has an answer. It sings because it has a song by Maya Angelo. And I'm gonna distress those and we're gonna go from there. So to tone this down, I'm gonna use the vintage texture stamp. So I'm gonna just move these. They are spray sealed, but they're not sealed sealed yet. And I'm gonna use the distressed stamp from vintage textures. I might use the distressed edge stamp as well but we'll see. So I'm gonna use white paint. I kept layering the distress stamp until I got the amount of coverage that I wanted. I ended up distressing the other two boards as well. I'm just gonna lightly hit this one. They'll have to be Dried. Love that. Look what that did. So So for the little strips of paper, I'm using Tim Holtz Distress Inks and Vintage Linen and Walnut Stain. Sorry, Vintage Photo. The other one's called Antique Linen and I'm not using that one. So I'm just gonna go and actually, what I like to do first is I like to get these pliable and bent. Okay. 
Let me just get some aging on them. And now I'm going to take the stamps that I used and I'm going to hit these with the stamp. So now I'm getting ready to use the new pastiche stamp. It's a two stamp set. And I'm specifically going to use this bird cage and the little bird that's on the swing. One of the things that you're going to love, 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 love about the new stamps is the masks now come stamped. That is so incredible. So loving that. So this is the cage. And this is the little bird that's on the swing. And I've got the mask. So what I'm going to want is... I don't want to stamp the bird first and have all the lines go over the bird, even though I know that that's how it would look in the real world. I want the bird to be over the, over the top like that. So whatever you want to be in the foreground, you're going to stamp first. So my plan is to stamp it in this area here. So you can see why I had to lighten up this panel of the board. And I'm super happy with the way that the boards are configured. I'm just going to let them dry because I do want some natural spacing in between them. I've lined up where my bird would go with respect to the bird cage. And as a placeholder, while I ink up my stamp, I'm using just the mask. When I want a good impression, I'll ink up my stamp. And then I'll stamp onto a plain sheet of paper. Kind of seasons my stamp before use. So cute. And then I will just load it up again. It's not going to take much because I just re-inked my pad. And I know about where I'm going to want it to go. Right there more pressure. It's so cute. And I know I'm going to get some spacing around the board. That's to be expected. So I'm going to then put my mask over my bird. Like so. I'm going to do the same thing with the stamp as I did with the bird. I'm going to ink it. Again, I'm going to get probably a little space along the board. And then I'm going to lift it up. And there we have the bird in the cage. 
While I loved the bird in the birdcage, I felt like it was fighting with the background a little bit, so I ended up whitewashing that area. I wouldn't have done it as heavily if I wasn't trying to cover up the ink. I had a recording issue. So after I painted that section white, I went and I repeated the process I did with the ink and I used paint. I used the exact same process. So I used my black velvet paint, placed the bird, went over it with the mask, and then I did the bird cage over it. There were a couple of areas that didn't stamp well. So what I did was I used my Pasca pen and I went and I just connected those sections. They're going to appear a little bit darker. So if you look in here, you can see where I did that. And then also in this section here, I'll just take some sandpaper and sand that back. And then I used Pentar Express Glue and I attached the words. After I did that part, I took my X-Acto knife and I ran it along this section of the board to redefine where the separation in the boards was. And I wanted to make it a little bit more pronounced. So that's what I did in that section. And I really like the effect that that gave it. So now I'm just gonna let this dry and I'm going to sand those sections and I'm going to seal. And I'm really happy with the way that that looks. So you can see the beauty of the the natural paint inlay. We've got the vintage textures, and then the bird cage. And I am super happy with how this turned out. I absolutely love it. Now that it's sealed, I'm gonna take black velvet paint and paint the sides. That really makes the pieces pop. And now I'll just wipe those edges. It'll give it a nice aged shadow look. And now it's done.